Thank you, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shurgan. It's great. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, you know, I find myself on more of these type of video sessions than ever before, uh, but it is the way of the world, uh, the way things are going now. So uh, great to be here with all of you. Um, I can say in a way I can relate to what you're going through right now, uh, that I have two children myself that are both in university. Uh, my daughter, she's in second year at Buffalo State, and her biggest issue right now is her boyfriend, who was at Buffalo State with her, and now had to go back to his home of Sweden. So she's uh, in a, she's doing a long distance relationship right now, which is not much fun. Uh, my son uh, has taken the opportunity to do a double major in business, and he's taking his real estate course at the same time. And I share that with you because you know it really shows we can take this opportunity of yes, we're in a time of change, and we can use it to our betterment and fast forwarding things. And, uh, and, and it's just interesting to see. So definitely can relate to, you know, to what you're going through now. You know, just talking about change, uh, that, that's, the, that's the word. I mean, that's what's going on in business. Every conversation you have, that's what's being discussed. And I look back at change and I think, you know, 28 years ago when I started in dental, uh, you know, the number one selling dental item, if you can imagine this, was Kodak DF58 film. Um, today, I was actually looking it up. That item isn't even on the top 100 list of dental products sold uh, right now. So you, you can just see, I mean, in that period of time, how much has changed in our world. And I think it's a testament to where we are now. And, you know, we look at, you know, I think change is something we have been going through. The internet has brought it on and there's, there's so many things that have sped up uh, as a result of that. And I think what, you know, what COVID has done for us is really it's sped up the rate of change is really all I is all we see it's done. So some can look at that as that's a bad thing. Others look at it, hey, this is a good thing. You know, from the Sinclair world, uh, we look at it as a um, as a positive approach, a positive opportunity to really advance dentistry and the work we do with our dental offices. So on Sinclair, so Sinclair is a hundred percent family uh, owned uh, Canadian uh, company. Uh, next year, we'll be celebrating our 50th anniversary, so we're really proud of uh, those years of being able to service all of our, our, our dental friends across the country. Uh, we service over 15,000 dental offices across Canada. We have over 20,000 uh, in our daily consumable products, but we also do equipment and we do uh, technical service support. And as Dr. Shurgan said, you know, our real passion is around supporting the dentist, the dental uh, owners, to help them really uh, realize their dreams. And for some, that is building an amazing practice. For others, it's, it's like Dr. Shurgan and Dr. Ron and Natalie have done, is build a group of offices. Uh, and that is definitely a trend uh, we're seeing. And we are working with all dentists across the country in all of those areas. Uh, it, um, just to, you know, to, to share with you a few things that we're working on. And I'll tell you, our strategic plans over the last 90 days have changed dramatically. Uh, with respect to what's happening in our world today, but I'll really summarize it as three things. First, you know, our focus is on understanding the new needs of our customers. Two is how are we going to be able to help them? And three is planning for a future that will be very different to the past that we've had. And literally, you know, we would talk about past as the last 12, 24, 36 months. We're talking now the past 30, 60, 90 days and where the future is gonna lead because it times are changing. And the things we're doing to help support in that area is, you know, regulations are, are, are changing now. In every province, dentists are pulling their hair out right now saying, how do I understand what is the PPE new guidelines? And what, what are the guidelines for my office? And how do I handle my staffing? And how do I handle patient flow now that, uh, you know, with the social distancing and all of that that we're going through? And, you know, I don't know like if, if you've done it, but I've gone on TikTok there are no solutions for this stuff on TikTok. So we've got to figure this one out without the, the use of social media. And so we're helping our customers uh, you know, with understanding the new regulations, what's coming, what they need to have versus the nice to haves. Uh, and online education. We've done um, a series of online programs like this one, uh, really trying to provide the, the, the knowledge that's necessary right now. And three is rebuilding your practice. Uh, you know, Jake has talked about, you know, the, the practice, the metrics and, and such. Those metrics are in a state of flux right now because of all that's going on. 
So there are tools that we have, such as EDM Maps, which is a tool that helps you understand your numbers under, and then pull out the key metrics and measure those. Uh, Recall Maps, Jake talked about that. Another fantastic tool to, uh, to help understand where you can you know, be driving your patient flow in to the office again. Uh, marketing tools, online education uh, are tools that we're working on. And then for the future, and just really to sum up with this, the future and what we see happening is uh, there, you're gonna, you know, we're going to be looking for products that help you execute what you need to do faster. And I think that's the key is we got to get things done faster for patients. Uh, same day dentistry. This is going to be the new norm. Uh, you know, there was a debate, hey, whether CAD CAM dentistry is here, is it the future, is it not? It is the future. Uh, and it is a part of where we need to go. And as a company, Sinclair, our focus is on looking and bringing in more solutions that provide that same day dentistry. Uh, revenue generating and cost management solutions. You know, Jake talked about the supply side of things, the five to 7%. You know, our job is to help you understand how you can take those dollars you have and best utilize them to, to, to generate the business and, and run your practice and provide the best, highest level of patient care. Our job is that, and that's what we're focused on. And then managing the larger consolidated customers. We're going to see dental offices that are not going to make it out of this uh, COVID situation. That's the harsh, unfortunate reality of it. But at, on the other side of that is, you will see more consolidated dental offices, and that is a good thing, in our opinion, for dentistry in the same situations where that can provide more consistent, higher level of care and whatnot, those opportunities exist. We at Sinclair are focused on that segment, which is the strategic market area. And then lastly is support our customers on what they want to do. Some customer, you know, some of our dentists want to be focused 100% on dentistry. Others want to be on the business side. Others a combination of. Our role is not to really say one is better than the other, but to, but, but to say, uh, what do you need that we can do to provide? Because we've got the solutions. It's a matter of tailoring our solution for you. So, uh, you know, I'll sum up by saying this. In dental, I've been in it 28 years. It definitely doesn't feel that long, so I'll tell you, it goes by fast. I'll say that. Uh, but um, we are in one of the greatest fields there is to be in uh, today and in the future. And I'll say we're providing an essential service that's part of the overall healthcare of an individual. And what a great thing it is that we're doing and you all are doing and will be doing as you go out into the dental world. So it's a great industry to be in. You're in a great field. Uh, and I believe, yes, our future is evolving, but I believe it's evolving into what will be an even brighter one for dentistry. So we're, we're glad to be a part of it, glad to be supporting you. I look forward to uh, any way, anything we can do as you transition to help support you in your careers as you come out. But thank you for the time today, Dr. Shurgan. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, present the Sinclair story. And um, again, look forward to, to the next session. Not a problem at all. Thank you for everything that you do for us, Peter. And once again, you've been a pioneer in the special markets division in Canada. And we look forward to continue uh, seeing you succeed and continue the growth of Sinclair. Um, we're going to go ahead and pass the mic on to one of our speakers earlier uh, in this series, um, Dr. Chris Finelli, who will be introducing our next speaker. Thank you so much, Isham. And great job, Jake. Really, really beautiful talk. Uh, we learned so much and, and wonderful points. So it was I very much enjoyed it, and I know all the viewership did as well. Um, I have the great uh, pleasure of introducing Dr. Michael Rondinelli. Um, it's very rare in life uh, that you come across a person who is a true inspiration. And I mean that both personally and professionally through and through. Um, I know Mike personally, and, and, and we've worked together, and... To have the unique qualities that he has as a genuinely good guy, good person that you can trust, uh, to be solid clinically, he does excellent dentistry, very good work, and uh, to have the business acumen and the leadership mindset uh, that he has, it's inspiring and, and just he's a wonderful person to be around. Um, I've known Mike since childhood. I think we were destined to become uh, good friends because our, our dads grew up together, they went to university together and they were close. Um, so just a little bit about Mike in detail. Uh, Mike was born and raised in Sarnia, Ontario, where Dr. Rondinelli spent much of his childhood at his family dentist's office and who in turn inspired him to become a dentist and make an impact in his community. And he certainly has done that without question. 
subsequently, Mike attended the University of Western Ontario, and while there, he focused on genetics and molecular biology at that aspect of his education. He subsequently went on to uh, attend the University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry and graduated in 2012. Uh, he still currently serves as a guest lecturer and clinical instructor at both institutions, and he's always keeping on top of CE and uh, cutting edge industry related uh, findings and courses as well, and teaching them as well. Uh, after graduation, he is now the president and CEO of the Huron Dental Group and the Huron Dental Management Group. Uh, very impressively, he's got 12 locations in just six years alone, and he employs a staff of over uh, 100 uh, employees. I'm incredibly excited today to uh, introduce Mike and also will be very attentive in, in listening to his lecture and his teachings, it's very valuable. He'll be discussing um, and lecturing on leadership, growth, and financial success in every department of the dental practice. Uh, he is my friend, uh, he is my colleague, uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Michael Roninelli. Thanks, Chris. You know how to make a guy blush here. What can I say? <laughs> All right, let's uh, share screen. Remember what Dr. Shergan told me yesterday? Okay. Okay, Hasham, I, I assume you'll tell me if uh, something's not working right. Here. You're good to go, so, Mike. You're looking good. Okay, well, I mean, looking good is debatable, but uh, at least the PowerPoint's working great. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, I'll do uh, some, uh, some thank yous on the next slide. But um, what we're going to be talking about today is leadership, growth, and financial success in every department of the dental practice. So when I gave uh, this talk uh, back at Dentistry Disrupted, um, uh, Vic Jindal's event, uh, I had probably at least a dozen people reach out to me and say, Mike, uh, your talk inspired me. Uh, I've been an associate for five years, and uh, you make this startup process sound so easy and being able to thrive in it um, that I am going to stop being an associate and I'm going to start working and trying to uh, start a, a dental practice and grow it and see what I can do. So, um, I mean, if I can have the same effect uh, today um, and I can inspire one of you out there, to uh, maybe transition into ownership or even just learn how to run your practice more efficiently. Or if you're a new grad, uh, which many of you are on this call, um, if I can just teach you how to grow a practice, uh, whether it be your own or someone else that you work for. So uh, that's the goal of today's talk. So we're gonna start uh, by showing you how to do a startup practice, but then I'm gonna switch into kind of almost how you master a practice and, and going into some of the metrics and things you need to look for. So that's, uh, that's the agenda for the next 45 minutes. I like to keep it nice and short. I have a short attention span. So um, two era so uh it was even with respect to the nazis and and world war ii but even from um uh you know to racism the divide that we see every day uh furthermore it's actually pointing towards canada which is kind of cool so they say it's also unification between america and canada so i just like that picture So a big thank you. Um, I know everybody's uh, been singing Dr. Shergan's praises, but I, as a close personal friend of his, I mean, I can't say it enough. I had to say it one more time here because he called me and was like, hey, I'm gonna, these fourth years really got robbed of a year. Um, you know, the last few months of dental school is when I learned the most and that's so true. So he literally said, I'm going to create a webinar series. And then by Monday, I think this talk was on Friday, by Monday, he had it already released a full month full of webinars. So, um, you know, it's just an, an amazing uh, lineup of speakers here. Uh, so take advantage of it. So Dr. Azeem Sheik uh, and, and Odin, uh, they've held a bunch of webinars. 
Manisha and Vic Jindal. Um, you know, these webinars have been coming out. I mean, I think I've learned more in the last month and I've been out for eight years. Uh, I think I've learned more about dentistry in the last month than, than I did in all of dental school and even for my first few years. So uh, just impeccable. Dr. Chris Finelli, great introduction. I've, uh, I've known you like a brother for a lot of years. So, uh, so happy to see the person you've become. Uh, and just all the speakers, these have just been some great talks. Um, you know, just to comment on a couple of the ones that I was mentioned in, uh, Dr. Jastikar mentioned me as a, a mentor and I, I text Jazz and I said, thank you. I appreciate, you know, giving, uh, giving credit, but uh, Dr. Jazz was somebody that was in the clinic um, uh, every single time I was placing an implant. He literally would wake up on Saturday mornings at 6 a.m., uh, get the, the patient frozen, all ready to go, uh, teeth were out, alveoplasty the bone, and then I would come in and place the implant. So this guy, uh, his success is, is all him and his eagerness to learn. And then I'm telling that story because of all of you new grads, uh, don't, your career is what you make of it. So take advantage of those times. Take advantage of the abilities that you have somebody coming in and placing implants. Go get them frozen, get the, get the, the flap done, get all that kind of stuff done so that uh, you can focus on learning how to do those procedures. So anyways, the, the story, the moral of the story is to, uh, to you know, make your career what, what you can. Okay, so about me, I uh, graduated in uh, 2012 from University of Detroit Mercy. Uh, we have the Huron Dental Group, uh, which is uh, a group of 12 dental practices. I have great partners, uh, Dr. Momin Metwali, Dr. Mahmoud al uh, Dr. Alan Poole, Dr. Gabriel Ponce, and uh, there's about uh, 14 to 15 doctors that we, that we work with and are part of our group here. Why I became a dentist. So I'll spend two seconds on that. That jacked up pan is myself. So I had um, eight congenitally missing teeth, baby teeth. So uh, when I was 15, 16 years old, I was always in the dentist uh, office getting anything done. Um, and, you know, I looked back and I was like, that doesn't seem like a bad profession. So uh, that's how I got into it at a, at a very young age. Um, so I know from probably about the time I was 15 that I wanted to be a dentist. So um, the moral of the story in that is that, you know, something that would be a negative. Uh, most people would say, uh, you know, having eight congenitally missing teeth is a bad thing. For me, it was a, a great, uh, great experience and it, and it sh shaped the rest of my life. So, um, so that I always believe that you should expose your flaws and your weaknesses. This is uh, Eight Mile, the movie. I was going to show the video clip, but it's uh, it's not the the kindest of language. Uh, this is the final rap battle on Eight Mile between Eminem and Papa Doc. Um, so, in a rap battle, you usually kind of insult the other person that you're you're doing the rap battle with. Um, you know, you, they're making fun of each other all all along. Um, Eminem in the final rap battle basically goes and exposes all his weaknesses right from the start. So he says he's trailer trash. He says he's poor. He says his mom's a drug addict. He exposes himself completely and therefore Papa Doc can't even respond and loses the rap battle. So um, if you're with this talk, same thing. Uh, I was never the top of my class. In fact, I was the bottom five in my class. Uh, I was never the smartest kid uh, growing up. I always struggled to get into uh, to schools and I struggled with standardized testing. I was probably one of the worst standardized test, test takers I know. Uh, but that said, it was uh, hard work and determination and uh, a strong will that uh, got me to where I am. So uh, for all those dental students that are watching and, and those new docs that are, are you know, find that they were at the bottom of the class or they weren't the smartest when it came to histology. Um, I'll tell you right now, if you treat your patients right, you're kind, you're respectful, and you treat every patient like uh, they're your mother, um, you will be successful in this profession. And, and with all this COVID stuff going on, I agree with everything that Peter said is that we will emerge stronger from this all. And the, the profession has never been better than it is today. So just a quick about me, uh, this is where I started, was in Sarnia, um, started associating uh, in 2012 here. Um, and then in uh, uh, 2013, uh, Dr. Shurgan and myself bought a practice in Grand Bend. Uh, it was our first practice, it was a great learning experience. 
Um, from there, we started Stony Creek Family Dental in London, which Dr. Shurgan owns. Um, after that, in 2015, we uh, started the 600 Tecumseh Dental that Dr. Takar owns now and, and Dr. Shurgan. And then uh, we opened one up in Corona in Riverview. Uh, then in 2017, we moved into Kettle Point, Forest, uh, Clearwater Family Dental in Sarnia. Uh, 2018 was Brights Grove, Lakeside Family Dental. 2019, uh, Strathroy, uh, sorry, Chatham, uh, um, and uh, Leamington. And then 2020, uh, we just opened Strathroy and uh, soon to be Kingsville too. So these are some of the logos and, and brands. So I'm showing this because later on we'll talk about branding. Um, you can see if uh, every office is individually branded. Uh, however, similar colors, similar feel, um, that same uh, mantra that goes out throughout all the logos. So more about me uh, on the personal side, married my wife, Vanessa. Um, she's an OBGYN at Ascension Providence in Detroit. Um, best thing to ever happen to me. Um, and then we have our little girl that is eight months old. Her name is Brooklyn. Uh, she's absolutely adorable. She's, uh, uh, she is also the best thing to happen to me. And, uh, this whole COVID experience has been, uh, good because I literally feel like I have a paternity leave and I've been spending so much countless hours with her. We have playtime in the morning, uh, playtime when I get home from work after. So, uh, couldn't be more thankful that I got these three months to spend with our, uh, my little girl and watch her grow up. So now we'll start talking about how to build a startup practice. Okay. So I want, yeah, you know, a lot of you are, are new grads, like I said, so you might think like, Hey, I'm not ready to do a startup practice, which is totally understandable. And, and Jake did an awesome uh, prelude to that to say, um, you know, it, the timing might not always be right. So don't feel like you got to graduate and you got to go buy a practice or you got to do a startup practice. But with times being so uncertain and times being so challenging right now, we need to have all the tools on our tool belt to know how to do everything, not just clinically, but also from a business perspective. So having the ability to uh, know a little bit about construction, about leaseholds, about signing a lease and doing all that kind of stuff um, is going to pay dividends in the future. You need to know this stuff. So I'm not asking everybody to be an expert. There's people like, uh, uh, you know, Vic Jindal and Dr. Shurgan and myself and Jake who can all help you uh, when the time is right. However, uh, it's a great, uh, we need to know the, the basics of how to start a practice and then how to master that and how to master a dental practice. There's a lot of talks about that. Uh, Jake uh, gave you a bunch of information and, and Dr. Me and Quick will, will uh, definitely give you a bunch of pearls tomorrow. Uh, but these are things that you need to know as you're entering the profession. So just some other projects uh, that I did from starting up from scratch was Stony Creek in uh, London in 2015. That was my very first startup with Dr. Shurgan, uh, Windsor in 2016, um, and Corona was 2016 as well, Forest in 2017, Sarnia Clearwater Family Dental in 2017. We'll talk further about that. We're going to use that as our little case presentation. And then Brace Grove in 2018. And then uh, Chatham and Leamington in 2019, and then Strathroy in 2020, and we got a few more projects on the go as well past that. So um, those are all practices I started from scratch, and and those are my true passion. I love seeing, uh, you know, putting something on paper and then getting to actually walk into it when uh, the day is done and everything's uh, six eight months later. And actually get to see patients and and just look up and look around and be like wow i built that uh it's way more satisfying than buying something in my opinion so um we're going to use uh one of my offices here clearwater family dental as a little case presentation um so i'm going to tell you how to build a startup practice but i'm going to walk you through with clearwater family dental um so that we can kind of put a and uh, something applicable uh, to what we're going to say So when we start a practice and we're going to master a practice, uh, there's about 11 steps that I like to look at. Okay. 
So the first one is you got to find a great location. All right. With the location comes lease, all that kind of stuff. Second, we got to do the construction phase and the leaseholds phase. Okay. So that's building the actual practice. From there, uh, once we have our shell, we have all the walls up the way that we like it. Then we get into our dental equipment, your electronics and your finishes, your clinical decisions, what procedures you're going to be doing, et cetera. Then you have to develop that practice. That's so the first six steps is kind of when you're, you're building the actual office. Um, from seven to 11 is how we're going to make that practice grow the practice mastery part operating efficiency, human resources and compliance management and leadership, and then your black practice met metrics tracking what you're actually doing. If you aren't tracking anything, um, nothing, if nothing's measured, you're not going to see any growth. Okay. So let's talk about location for a second here. Okay. So in the story of Clearwater Family Dental, we picked uh, this location down here. All right, there's a few reasons why we picked that. All right, so new developments going on in the area. So when you're looking for a place to put a startup practice, you always wanna look where the new developments are going. In order to find that out, I mean, the easiest way is just to drive around and see where there's some brown dirt. You can actually see it on some satellite images and then talking to the local developments and the local builders and seeing what areas are in the master plan. So in the master plan in Sarnia, there's three major development areas. And that's where we decided to put the practice was kind of near all those three new development areas. Okay. Where are your existing dentists? All right. So the existing dentists are highlighted in red. As you can see, we're more on the south end of, of the town. Uh, that's where we wanted to be to kind of develop our own niche. Traffic counts, you know, the, the best form of free marketing and free advertising is having a clinic that is going to have an extremely high traffic count. For Sarnia, we don't have high traffic counts, but um, I mean, there's areas in, in uh, Kitchener-Waterloo, GTA, that you can have 80,000 to 100,000 cars a day go by. That's 100,000 people that potentially are seeing your sign or your clinic, and it's all for free. Your commercial availability. So once you have a spot that you think you want to go, uh, you need to look to see if there's plazas there, uh, if there's some dirt that you can build your own building. Uh, you need to look into all the availability of that. Even once you have a spot and you have the perfect plaza, I mean, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. You need to go in and you need to start seeing uh, what you're going to be doing with respect to leases. Uh, is that developer good to work for or good to work with? Uh, some of the times it, it can be an absolute disaster working with some people. So even when you have that ideal spot, you need to look into uh, peel all the layers of the onion off after schools. I mean, schools aren't a big factor, but we knew that the college was doing a major expansion. So we decided to put one right next to it. Um, and then demographics and population density. So I look to, I like to look at the density of the population that's around it. So is there condos, is there high rises? Um, I don't necessarily like putting, um, uh, clinics where there's big million dollar homes that are stretching hundred foot lots because the density is not there. And that's also the type of patient I, I don't relate to. Um, I'm not a high end cosmetic dentist. I'm a bread and butter, uh, blue collared uh, type dentist. So, um, you know, that middle of the road demographic is what's works best for me. And I've always find that, uh, blue collar demographics are what, what I like to be with. Plus they need the most work work done and they usually have good factory insurance or something along those lines. So constructions and leaseholds. I mean, I love doing these. This is, uh, I, I'm Italian. I grew up in a construction family. So this stuff kind of comes uh, uh, second uh, nature to me. Um, so you start with drawing, uh, drawing your designs and designing your clinic. This is the fun part because you're literally on paper uh, moving stuff around and um, uh, you're going to see what you put on uh, pen to paper come to reality after that. So um, yeah, you want to customize your clinic. We wanted big windows in the front, you know, get lots of natural sunlight. We wanted iPads on the walls. Uh, we wanted a separate checkout station here. So this separate, che separate checkout station allows patients to go there and, and get their bill and pay their bill privately without the whole waiting room hearing. We wanted sterilization right in the middle. So all four ops in this clinic can hit sterilization within footsteps. All right. That's going to increase the efficiency and the flow in the clinic. 
um, we put a doctor's desk in a re, uh, neck behind the reception area so that if the receptionist needs the doctor, they can just turn around. Same thing with the consultation area. Utility room, put that as far away from your patient rooms as you possibly can. You're gonna hear those vacuums, you're gonna hear those compressors, and it's really, it can be really uh, annoying and bothersome to patients. So get that as far away as possible as you can. The, the barrier-free washroom, uh, you gotta comply with your ministry guidelines. They are absolutely massive. I think it's a five foot uh, turning radius in there. Um, a lot of wasted space, but uh, it has to be handicap accessible. Um, and this is how much uh, room they require. So uh, you got to comply with your regulations. With the operatories, I mean, we you got to structure your operatories in a way that you're kind of walking in and seeing the patient right away. I'm going to show you a picture later, but uh, think of it ergonomically too. Ergonomics are huge for dentistry. Dr. Mona talked about that yesterday. So um, you know, make sure you're you're situating your your operatories in a way that you can uh, uh, address the patient head on. So this is what it kind, of, it kind of looked like when we started, just a big empty room. Uh, we trenched out all the floors, put all of our plumbing, our electrical, run our conduit wires. Um, you're putting up steel studs. You can put wood uh, studs in, the, in an office, but I prefer to put steel, it's quicker, cheaper. Um, your lead lining, there's always new requirements and new regulations regarding that. So make sure you're complying with all those with the ministry. Apply for your route approvals right away too because uh, it can take a long, long time. And there's even some of the districts that won't let you even start putting a shovel in the ground until you have your radiation approvals. Um, so that's very important. And this is just a fun little picture of Dr. Shurgan and I at our first uh, startup clinic in uh, Stony Creek in London. Um, you know, we went in after hours and we're playing with the, uh, the, the tractors. Dental equipment. So. This is uh, who we worked with um, uh, for this clinic, uh, Sinclair Patterson, Henry Schein, uh, all great all great companies. Uh, Peter talked earlier, phenomenal person, phenomenal human being, has been in the industry for a while. Dean, I also know gave a talk, and Aaron uh, O'Donnell as well. So all great people to work with. Uh, can't say enough uh, good things. Um, my rep, Karen, also amazing. So, um, uh, one thing I would say with uh, with respect to the dental companies, I know there's a lot of reps out there, so hopefully I'm not offending anybody, but um, you have a, a, a responsibility to yourself, to your family, to, to get the best prices and to build your clinic efficiently. So um, a dental company will do everything for you. Uh, they will They will take you through the design process. They will um, uh, set you up and they'll, they'll bring you to the manufacturers that I'm showing here, Dr. Ponce and I visiting Midmark, uh, which is absolutely great. But at the same time, uh, you want to make sure that you are working with the company that is best for you. Um, and you are buying your stuff, um, uh, from that company. I've had countless dentists that have came to me asking for advice on a startup clinic. Um, they've already committed to, you know, equipment that is just far, too much for what they need for a startup uh, practice. And I say, hey, you need to get out of this. This is not good. And they say, well, you know, they did my design, they did this, they did that, I feel bad, I can't, I can't say no now. So, you know, just try and remain independent and try and remain, uh, uh, you know, uh, not, not committed to, to anybody till, till you have all the information and uh, you've done your due diligence and you've decided and you've taken in the information and know who you wanna work with, so. The three companies I mentioned have all been wonderful to me, so I can't say enough good things. Um, so next, decide, you know, this is a standard operatory that we have at Clearwater Family Dental. So we wanted our delivery systems right on the chair. Ergonomically, that's better. It's right in front of you. You just grab the handpiece and that's it. Uh, there's not enough, there's not any of the twisting, all right? Those twisting motions when you're grabbing from behind you all the time uh, can really wear on you over the years. So think of how you want your operatory set up. Are you gonna be putting in a pan? Are you gonna be adding a CBCT now? Uh, Dr. Meehan and Dr. Jeff Sumner, I mean, they talk about digital dentistry all the time. Um, this is the way of the future. Are you gonna put the double lead lining in the walls to have a CBCT uh, done immediately? So when you're doing a startup, you need to think about this stuff beforehand. Prime scan, you know, absolutely amazing technology. We have this at Clearwater. Uh, are you going to be implementing this? This is digital dentistry, same day dentistry. 
what Peter just alluded to. Uh, you know, appointments are going to be a lot short. Uh, you're going to need to keep a patient in the chair for a lot longer now, potentially, so you don't have to turn over rooms as often. Um, so CIRAC is going to be leading the way with respect to that. Our milling machine right in the center of the office to, to show it off to patients as they're coming out. Sterilization. So with COVID happening, I mean, sterilization was already important. I mean, we uh, had to re revamp our offices. Uh, we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars with respect to sterilization to get it up in, up in the code. But if there's one thing that COVID has done now, it's created a heightened awareness of the average patient to viruses and infections. Uh, I've never seen patients so obsessed over this than I do now. They're coming into my clinics and they're wearing masks and gloves and uh, they have everything on. They're walking in and they're not touching anything. They're staying six feet away from you. Um, this was something that never happened before. Patients weren't, were never this aware of viruses and infections and infection control. So uh, when we're going back, there's one thing, you need to get your team absolutely so well prepared for this. You need to be educating them. You need to have manuals in place. You need to have everything in place for them because uh, this is uh, something that is, is gonna be completely different than what we're used to. So make sure your sterilization centers are absolutely top notch and spend some money on this kind of stuff. So next we'll talk about electronics and finishes. I mean, we worked with Amity Technologies and we still continue to do so. A phenomenal company. Um, you know, they understand your needs as a dentist and, and you'll have your intraoral cameras working correctly. They'll have sinking TVs on the walls and on the ceiling. So, um, you know, working with an IT company, don't just go find your, find your local IT guy. You need to find somebody that knows what they're doing and is experienced with respect to that. And then putting the small finishes on. So, um, you know, save money on your startups when you can on the actual leaseholds and the construction, but at the same time, put the finishing touches there. Spend that extra money on some artwork on the walls, some nice sofas, a nice table, TVs, these 3D panels. Dr. Ponce installed those himself. I mean, they look absolutely phenomenal and they're cheap. So putting the little tiny finishes on these clinics, I mean, it makes it look absolutely phenomenal for patients. They love it. And it looks like it's just an expensive, you know, out of this world clinic when maybe it's not. So just a little mental break here. I just threw in a couple of videos to uh, uh, kind of, so you don't have to keep talking about dentistry and give your head a rest here. So here's uh, my wife and I make funny videos of our daughter on TikTok. It might be loud, so you might want to turn down your speakers. Oh, hang on. Let's get that going again. Hopefully this plays because it's actually a really funny video. So that's a little Brooklyn, eight months old, TikTok celebrity. Um, clinical decisions. So. What are you going to be implementing in your practice? Um, you know, restorative, endo, oral surgery. What's your plan? Uh, I know, I know, dentists that even sometimes start off doing their own hygiene. I don't recommend it, but you know, that's that's something people do to keep the the cash tight. Um, you know, are you going to offer sedation? Are you going to be nitrous, IV, uh, GA? Um, you know, all your different equipment that you need. So you need to keep your budgets in place, and Jake talked about that. Uh, but at the same time, you need to be thinking about the clinical decisions that you're going to be making in your practice. Okay, so we kind of are done. Uh, we've set up the practice now, uh, conceptualize this. Now you need to, the, the easy part is done, I say. Uh, the hard part is now started. Um, so you need to develop your practice and you need to master the, the operations of it. And then you need to start growing your patient base because now you have a startup with zero patients. You might have spent five hundred thousand to a million dollars even doing that. So your your principal and interest payments are now coming in at ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month. Uh, you've just paid. You know you hired a receptionist. You've hired an assistant. So you owe them another uh, uh, five to ten thousand every month in in salaries and wages. Um, you know a hygienist. 
So your expenses now, you're at $20,000, $25,000 of overhead every month and you have zero patients. So um, we got to work on our brand, okay? So what are you going to be conveying to the public to try and draw patients into that clinic? I like to break that into internal marketing and external marketing. So internally, internally is the easy stuff. When you people have existing clinics, they're going and spending thousands of dollars on flyers and Facebook ads and Google ads. Work on those patients first. Don't spend a dollar externally unless you have your internal systems complete. So are, are you asking for patient referrals? The easiest way is the patients see that you're super busy. So they just assume that you don't need any new patients. Tell your patient that you're accepting new patients and hey, Mrs. Jones, we would love to see people like you in the practice now. Um, we, we love your family. You're, you know, everybody about you is wonderful. So if you have anybody like you, please send them our way. Just saying that, you're gonna see an increase in patient referrals, okay? Have your front desk uh, say the same things. Reiterate that, that to the patients. Have little cards, you know, write us, a, write us a review, write us a Google review if you're happy. Give those to your patients. Let them know that you're accepting uh, patients and that you you would love reviews. Um, you know, putting up posters in your in your office that you offer Invisalign, that you offer implants. You know, we put up some simple implant posters in the hygiene rooms, and we would have so many patients that ask us, "Hey, what are those things on the wall? I want to know. I want to know more about that uh, about that poster, about that implant thing. Is that good for me? Of course, of course that is. Once you've mastered internally, then you can go externally. So externally is spending money on Google, uh, Google ads, spending money on SEO, your website design, office signage, uh, advertising, um, uh, mailers, et cetera. If you're going to be spending money on external sources, you need to be tracking every single dollar you spend. So when we have a campaign, so let's take, for example, that we're going to do uh, a mail out campaign. We have, we spend $5,000 on mailers. It goes to, uh, you know, 10,000 homes in, uh, in the area. We have a section on, our, on our, um, um, our, our software that says, where did you hear about us? So basically the, the receptionist, when somebody comes in, they'll say, how did you hear about us? And then they'll say, oh, well, I got that mailer that you guys sent out. We put the mailer in there. So we take the $5,000 that we spent on the mailers and we uh, divide it by the number of patients that we got into. So we actually can find, figure out what our cost was per patient per referral to the office from that, from that uh, source. So we have clinics in, in Sarnia, we have clinics in Windsor and, and in rural areas between. So we find that, that you know, mailers don't work as well in certain areas. And we find that Google works amazing in some areas too. So allowing us to track our marketing and track where every dollar is spent we see where the mailers are good, where Google's good, where Facebook is good, and the areas where it's not. And then we just pump them up, the dollars into the, to the, the best sources of marketing and advertising. So like I said, internally, you gotta figure that out. Then you can put, go onto external and then track every dollar that's spent. Do you have a business plan? You know, do you have a long-term financial plan? I outlined some of the numbers before. When you're doing a startup and you're spending X number of dollars on, on your leaseholds, your debt, all that kind of stuff, you need to have a clear path to track your numbers and to see, to get you where you want to be, okay? So knowing your expenses, knowing your numbers is the most important thing when you're starting a startup practice and budgeting and forecasting. We know that based on historical data, we're going to bring this much money into each practice every month. So from there, our forecasted budget, we break down how much we can spend on sundries, how much we can spend on all of our supplies, how much we can spend on staffing. We take the number of hours that, we, that, each, patient, that each staff member is working, and we figure this all out beforehand so that we know exactly that we're going to be spending this much money at this period of time on our staffing costs. So we know this all beforehand, before the month even happens. And then if we hit a certain number of uh, revenue, this is how much profitability is gonna be going into the practice. And if we're not meeting our goals, we adjust the numbers accordingly. Operating efficiency. So I need a quick water break. Operating efficiency. Have you ever realized that you can get the same Big Mac, you know, in Shanghai that you can in, uh, you know, London, Ontario? It's because, and, you, and it can be done by a 16 year old kid. But yet when something's going wrong in our practices, we're always quick to blame the assistant, we're quick to blame the front desk. 
you know, my schedule isn't like this, this isn't the way I want it because my front desk screwed up. My front desk didn't know how long to book me for that root canal. Well, how come, how come McDonald's has figured out how to make uh, a Big Mac the same way in all over across the world? It's because of systems and protocols. You need to have systems in your practice and protocols in your practice so that everything is done the exact same way every single time. Okay, that front desk person needs to know exactly how long you need for that root canal. You need to be auditing your schedule. You need to be looking to make sure that uh, that you have enough time in your schedule. You need to be auditing your your ways you do procedures. You know, always go to the same thing over and over so that your staff and everybody knows and document it. Put checklists in place. At the end of every day, we we have downtime protocols. We have end of the day protocols, end of the week protocols, end of the month protocols. It's all checklist for everybody, all put into a reporting system that goes up from, from to the office manager, from the office manager to the regional manager, to our general managers, to me. So everything is a checklist and it's just put up in the, up the platform along the way. Human resources and compliance, I won't uh, spend a lot of time on this, but it's now more important than ever. Uh, the RCDSO, Public Health, and all the other ones have put uh, strict guidelines in for our returning back to practice. Um, you know, Victor Dahl was talking about uh, we might have to all sign up uh, for some additional insurances and who the liability falls on uh, with respect to COVID. So, um, I mean, stay on top of this stuff. Make sure that you're compliant with everything. Um, you know, we have a consulting company. There's multiple consulting companies out there to help you uh, if you're not familiar with it. Management and leadership. Uh, I mean, if you have a second, you got to watch Dr. Shergan's uh, Art of Management presentation. Uh, that guy is the king of management and leadership. Um, I would call him the goat of dentistry uh, uh, with respect to especially management and leadership, a lot of things. But um, anyways, management and leadership is exactly what I alluded to earlier in my presentation, in my opinion. Everybody should read the book um, uh, Extreme Ownership. Extreme Ownership by Jocko Willick. Uh, he was a U.S. Navy SEAL, and his mentality is that Looks like we lost uh, Dr. Mike Rondinelli here for a sec. Let me just try to get him back on to reconnect here, guys. My apologies for the inconvenience. This, I guess, times have been really tough from COVID, and I didn't pay my bills uh, at the office. But we're uh, hooked up to uh, uh, Dr. Ponce's cell phone, so we're going to run through his data nicely. Um, anyways, uh, Extreme Ownership, Jocko Willick. That's what I was saying. It's a great book. It tells you everything in your life is your responsibility. So if you're if you're complaining about the something's not booked correctly and you're complaining that that things aren't going well, uh, this is this is uh, going to change your mind and and realize that everything is is your own doing and your control of your fate. So and then customer service, um, you know, is is uh, we grew up in the pizza business. My parents had pizza places, so. Uh, the customer service experience needs to be there. You need to treat every single patient like they're a family member. You need to ask if they're okay. You need to see if there's anything that you can do for them. Uh, you need to be constantly uh, cognizant of this. Okay, and then now uh, we're gonna talk about practice metrics number 11 to kind of close her all off here. So, um, there's been a lot of talks about practice metrics and and these are some of the ones that are important to me so you know you need to look at your downtime as a dentist um you need to you need to make sure that uh that you're staying productive when you're at work you're at work for a reason right 
your available hours. Are you offering evening hours? Are you offering daytime hours? But make sure that you're actually full and you're staying you're staying uh, uh, busy when you actually are offering these hours. So you know if everyone's canceling at, at your 8 p.m. shift, try and reschedule this and try and 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 redistribute it. Your hygiene retention. If patients are coming in and you're seeing them for for emergencies and all this stuff, if the patients aren't coming back, your practice will decrease and your practice won't won't thrive. So measuring every single patient that's coming back for hygiene is something that we do. Your productivity, you know, when you're analyzing your office, your hygiene should be at 40% of your overall revenue. If, you're, if your numbers for hygiene are way lower, you need to start looking into this. Why is your hygienist team not billing the way they should be? Uh, maybe your dentistry is, is too aggressive. You know, you need to be looking at this. The 60-40 split is very important for us. Case acceptance, you know, re-examining yourself. Dr. Mike Ling talked about that. If your case acceptance isn't there, you need to take a different approach and different strategy to all that. Your overhead and your profits. Again, Dr. Me and Quick talks about all that. These are very important. You need to keep your overhead around 60% and then pay yourself from that. There's nothing worse than working for free uh, and being a practice owner. And then the number of your active patients. So it takes about 1,500 patients to keep a dentist busy. So when you're searching for these associate positions and you're looking to uh, see if you guys can open five days a week or see you know, how these clinics grow, make sure you have about 1,500 patients to keep a dentist busy full time. I'm kind of blowing through these last slides because I'm kind of worried about my internet connection. But um, anyways, with respect to revenue coming into the practice, uh, points number five and six there, outstanding dentistry. All right, there's so much untapped dentistry in your own offices that you need to be examining. If you're not that busy, or even if you are busy, make sure you're fully utilizing the patients that you have. All right, there's no, the, like I said, so much money goes into outside marketing and outside sources when there's so much dentistry sitting within your current charts that you have. Uh, having your staff auditing the charts is a great thing you should be doing right now. Um, you know, we just took a, a clinic and we just completely digitized the whole thing. And at the same time, we just look to see what outstanding treatment is there. And there's always stuff to find. Make sure in your computer software is that every single appointment's being pended. If you're seeing a patient and that patient's not booked back, that patient disappears into outer space. And what happens from there is basically you're not going to call that patient back. So they need to have a pending appointment or they need to be rebooked. So rebooking percentage is something you need to be tracking. Your procedure analysis, I said there too. You know, my thing nowadays is that every dentist needs to be a jack of all trades. If you aren't doing a certain procedure, you need to take CE, you need to learn how. Dr. Jake did an awesome uh, way of summarizing all that. So taking CE courses, looking at other ways. I know people hate ortho or they hate uh, endo or they hate all these other stuff. You need to know the basics. Don't overstep your limits. That's why we have great specialists. However, uh, this is something that we need to be looking into. Capacity metrics, all right? Um, your scheduling efficiency, your patient retention, I already touched on that. Every single patient needs to be booked back. Your scheduling efficiency, are you actually scheduling so that you're busy per, per hour of, uh, of your billings? You know, your billing should be anywhere from $400 to $1,000 an hour. If you're not doing that, you need to be examining that and you need to be tracking it to see why that isn't the case. Okay. Basically, uh, patients, you need to look into your patients. You need to see the demographics of your patient, like I said earlier. Uh, you need to see the utilization rate and if you are educating them for bigger procedures. And then having a strong hygiene program, that's, that's the number one thing. Uh, hygiene drives everything in your practice. So if you aren't fully utilizing your hygiene procedures, then I suggest that you look into that. The, the best you, uh, resources to look at the CDHO scaling time uh, as well. Medical history review. There's a ton of other things that are, are allowed to be billed for under uh, scaling time um, that your hygienists probably aren't fully utilizing. So looking into that, um, you know, addressing their roles and responsibilities, morning huddles, these are all things that you need to be doing to drive hygiene in your practice. And then your key performance indicators that Dr. Uh, Carrier already talked about. Um, you know, we track lab uh, expenses, payrolls, rent, supplies, advertising, um, you know, and a ton of other metrics. 
Uh, these all need to be tracked against industry averages and industry norms. Uh, that's highlighted in the red. So finding out your industry norms, doing these on a monthly basis. Um, if you don't have the capacity to do it on a monthly basis, get a bookkeeping company that will. Uh, there's tons out there. So being able to do all the above um, is very important to see the growth of your practice. If you're not measuring it, then you're not going to be able to track it. Another funny video of little Brooklyn here. So as you can see, we have a lot of fun in our spare time. Okay, so I'll start wrapping everything up here because like I said, who knows how long my internet connection is gonna last. Um, so yeah, basically your success in life is directly proportional to the number of uncom uncomfortable conversations you're willing to have is basically my theory on everything. So you have to be able to have those uncomfortable conversations with your staff. You have to be willing to have these talks with other doctors. Um, if you aren't comfortable having these tough conversations, you're going to be tied back in life. So I work with these, uh, phenomenal group of, uh, doctors. I mean, uh, the, all the doctors and the associates that we work with in our group. I mean, I feel like I don't even go to work every day. They're absolutely phenomenal human beings. So a little self promotion here really, really quickly. Um, I own the bespoke, uh, dental consulting service company. Um, we can be reached if you have any uh, HR compliance, scheduling, business development. If you ever want to do a startup, we're available to you. Uh, myself and Elizabeth Shaw, she's my general manager. Um, she uh, and myself run this company and we're there for anything that you need. Um, we've partnered with a local manufacturer, the Uniform Group in, in Toronto. So if anybody needs uh, level two reusable gowns up to 80 washes. We uh, have sourced them in unlimited quantity. So for anything for that, bespoke dental services at gmail.com. Um, something really cool that everybody might be interested in. We're going to be launching uh, kind of like a startup in Canada uh, webinar series, and then it's going to turn into in-person uh, groups. It's called denovoseminars.com. So log in, check that out. We're taking pre-registration right now. Um, so it's, it's similar. There's startup courses on, in the States, um, that Canadians are attending. This is going to be a Canadian only, uh, startup Institute. So we're going to teach you how to do a startup, uh, teach you how to build a startup practice. Like I said, it's going to be launching, uh, anytime now. So pre-register for that today and we'll keep you updated when it's fully launched. Um, but I'm super excited about that. Uh, because like I said, startup, uh, startup practice is my passion. Um, lastly, we've been working on an awesome website. Uh, they're on the call, Frank and Taras, uh, carelytics.io. So take a look. It's a, it's just in its beta testing. Um, it's basically a website to manage your dental practice. So, um, you're going to be able to, staff are going to be able to check in and check out, uh, on it for time logs. They're going to be able to do scheduling on it. Um, but the thing, the unique thing about carelytics is that, staff is going to be able to give you feedback right on the website. So, you know, if they're coming back after COVID and they don't feel comfortable, they're going to be able to send you a message themselves or anonymously to let you know how they're feeling. They'll also be able to input uh, the morale that they have. So this is going to be able to measure the morale in your, in your office uh, to ensure that you're not, um, you know, running a toxic environment and, and uh, you're going to have a gauge to see how that's going. So you're going to be able to manage your, your office from this website. Plus you're going to actually have a, a full dial on morale and how everybody's feeling. So like I said, the, um, uh, it should be out and running in about a month or two. The final twerks on the website are going to be completed. Um, but anyways, uh, carelytics.io. Any questions, concerns, comments, um, I'm always here for you. There's my personal email and my cell phone. Um, so yeah, reach out to me if you need anything. Reach out to all the speakers. We've all offered our, our uh, you know, words of, of encouragement, but we've also offered our emails and cell phone numbers. So take advantage of it. You guys are all new grads. Uh, you know, ask us any questions that you may have. So I'm going to stop talking before my internet crops out again. I want to thank everybody at the Dentistry Academy for having me and have a wonderful day.
Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Mike. That was very, very, very well done and well done with the recovery, man. I know that was, it's always a challenge, uh, but, uh, but hey, that's what happens when you're doing these kind of webinars. Um, before we go ahead and get started with the Q&A, once again, I just want to make the announcements for tonight's talk at 6 p.m where Nahid Mohammed will be talking to us about minimally invasive soft tissue grafting techniques for teeth and implants. And for those of you who saw Dr. Nahid Mohammed's talk early on in, I think it was week one of our, of our series, this guy's absolutely incredible. So please make sure that you tune in. And once again, tomorrow at 12 p.m., we'll be concluding the Dental Fast Track series with the one and only Dr. Mian Quek, who will be talking to us about how to rethink success, a Nile mindset to dentistry. So make sure that you sign up at dtacademy.ca. And as always, the password is track20. I'm going to go ahead and pass the mic over to John and Lauren for some questions. All right, guys. Mike, fantastic lecture. You're a wealth of knowledge, my friend. Um, we'll, we'll get right into the questions here. I think you touched on this first one in your own personal opinion. But um, for those who may not be at that level, um, one uh, participant asked, for a startup, how do you deal with the demand for implants and ortho if you're not comfortable doing these yet? Yeah, so yeah, first first one is to try and get comfortable with it. Um, second of all, I mean, if you are fortunate enough to bring it in-house, like a specialist in-house, um, someone who knows how to place implants, someone who does uh, a lot of ortho, that's another great way. Um, and then, I mean, at the end of the day, it's what's best for the patient. So. Um, although we, we like to try and grow a startup and we like to do what we can, we also have to treat everybody, um, you know, like they're our parents. So, uh, if a specialist is best, uh, uh sending it down to the local, uh, orthodontist or the local, uh, implant specialist, I mean, if that's what's best for the patient, that's what needs to happen. Awesome. Thank you. And another uh, quick one here. What company are you using for your direct mail postcards? Yeah, so there's, there's, I know there's like some national companies. Um, I've worked out, I mean, there's, what's the big one? Uh, I can't remember that there's full contact marketing is a dental uh, company that does it. Um, you know, Vista print, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I personally have found a better deal with a local guy that I use. Um, and I get phenomenal service from him. Uh, I go back and forth all the time. One thing I didn't touch on in the presentation, which I want to stress, is make sure that you are RCDSO compliant on all of your marketing. Um, the guide, there's a guidelines for marketing that they've published. Uh, give that a read, and then I actually approve all of my marketing with the college now. I have a direct, you know, kind of contact into there. I send it to them. They approve it, even though I've got this approved a thousand times. Uh, I still just do it. There's, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, sometimes want to complain and uh, get upset if you break any of the rules. So I just make sure everything is 100% on side with the college. Um, but yeah, I found a local guy that does phenomenal uh, work. His name's it's ODS printing. I'd be happy to provide anybody uh, with his contact. I get better deals from him than I do with Vista print or full contact marketing or whoever. And, and for me, it's not rocket science sending out a mailer. So uh, whoever gives me the best price. Uh, perfect awesome. answer there. Um, there was another request actually, if you're putting contact information in the chat, just to share your contact for the level two gowns. Sure. Um, but there were a couple other questions. Um, one of them was, how often do you review your protocols with your team? Uh, which tools do you use for that? And what are some specific tips to keep track of team compliance to those protocols? So Perfect kind of question. Yeah, great question. Great so um, we have uh, we have end of the day protocols, end of the week protocols, and end of the month protocols for all of our assistants, hygienists, um, front desk. Uh, so there's checkpoints all along the way at the end of the day, at the end of the week, and at the end of the month. From there, they report to the office managers. From the office managers then report to any regional managers we have in place. Then the regional managers then report to the general manager and myself. And everybody has a checklist. Everybody has uh, an end of the day checklist. I mean, I even, I'm in my office here, so I could even, I could even show you mine. 
I have one up on the wall and I have my own end of the day, end of the week, end of the month checklist. So even the CEO follows uh, protocols uh, in our organization. So um, anyway, so we're, we're constantly, if, uh, if, if something's not, you know, addressed to say if the, an assistant doesn't do a follow-up call or something along those lines, um, hopefully it's caught along the way. Right. So I always use the analogy of a kid in a cookie jar. If you have a kid and he steals a cookie from the cookie jar and he eats it and nobody slapped him on the hand and said, you're not allowed to do that. Guess what he's going to try and do next time. He's going to try and steal a cookie from the cookie jar. So same things with your staff. If they can break protocols and not do something and nobody calls them out on it, no one follows up on it. It's going to break the system and it's not going to get done next time. So as the CEO, you have to be making sure that, Everybody is following up with everything they're supposed to do and nobody's taking a cookie from the cookie jar and uh, and and not being reprimanded for it or let know that that they were supposed to do that. So did I answer the three part question? I just Yeah, I think you I think you got all three of them in there. Yeah. So, if I didn't I mean, the person can just email me and I'll I'll answer the part that I didn't. Yeah, no, it's honestly, I love checklists myself. So that's it's an amazing answer. The the next one's actually along the same lines. Um, it's asking if you have any specific method to track how much a practice can save, uh, how much a practice can save in processes and sorry, how much, sorry, how much a practice can save in process costs by adapting to digital dentistry. Uh, they say specifically in terms of using scanners instead of impressions. So specific method for tracking how much you can save there. 100%. I mean, we don't have a specific method to track how much we can save, but I mean, the the digital dentistry revolution is incredible. I mean, whether you invest in something like CRAC or if you can even invest on a Dex, we just invested in a desktop scanner. So we're taking impressions still at some of the clinics, putting them in a desktop, desktop scanner, scanning them, making an STL file, and exporting it to uh, a lab in California that's doing uh, crown and bridge work. Uh, you can get a crown back for 39 bucks. Um, I mean, and, and that's revolutionized uh, the practices so, and how much we're saving. And the desktop scanner is about, you know, three or $4,000. So you don't need to buy a $180,000 CRAC system to save money on your crown and bridge. I mean, there's lots of other ways to, to do this kind of stuff. We don't have necessarily a system in place for it, but, um, yeah, we've created our own lab and we take impressions from all, uh, from all the clinics. We bring them all into one centralized location and then we scan them and then send them out. So, um, you know, there's always ways to save money, but at the same time, you always have to make sure the clinical efficiency and the clinical uh, commitment to your patients is always there. So I'm all about saving money, all about doing stuff efficiently. However, you have to keep the patient, uh, you have to... You can only send somewhere if you would put that crown in your own mouth. So always keep that in mind. But in this day and age, digital revolution, 100%. Great way. Digital dentistry is an amazing way to save costs. All right, All right Mike. I'm going to finish off with a final question. Then we'll let you and your internet uh, breathe easy here. Um, <laughs> will, uh, will your startup series be available to new grads? Do uh, you find it too early to start preparing for a, a startup? Yeah. So great way to, to end it off because, um, you know, that's how I wanted to start this presentation was even though you might not be ready for a startup or to get into some of these practice metrics, having this information and having that tool in your tool belt is very, very important. So taking, yeah, startup seminars and, and, you know, diving into the metrics and diving into all this kind of stuff, it's never too early. In fact, I strongly encourage it. It's very, very important to know your numbers, know how to run a business effectively. We don't get, we don't get any training on uh, the business of dentistry and, and uh, how to start a practice and construction and leaseholds and all that kind of stuff. So uh, learning all that kind of stuff is another aspect to thrive. The environment that we're faced with and the environment that we're in right now is challenging. It's very, very challenging. So like Peter said, there will be some offices that might not make it through. But that said, if you know how to do this stuff and you can do it efficiently and smart, I'm very confident that you'll be able to thrive during these times.
Awesome. Thank you. All right. And I think we'll pass it on to uh, Dr. Shergan. Thank you again, uh, Dr. Roninelli. Thanks, John. Well done, Mike. That was incredible. It's always good to, to hear from one of the best. I wouldn't even say in the country, probably one of the best in the world for, for what you do. So hats off to you. Thanks a lot, my friend, my brother. Um, well done. And yeah, as I said, great recovery. So make sure that you guys um, you know, tune in, see what Dr. Rondinelli is doing. Uh, now, can you tell us a little bit of maybe your handle on social media for people to follow you a little bit, Dr. Rondinelli? Do, do you have that available? Yeah, for well, Instagram is probably the uh, Instagram and uh, LinkedIn is probably what I go on most. So Instagram's Rondinelli Dentistry, um, and then LinkedIn. Good question. I should probably I believe have it's available. just Dr. Michael Rondinelli on LinkedIn. Yeah, that yeah, sounds about right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, just as a quick reminder to our viewers that tonight, 6 p.m., Nahid Mohammed, uh, soft tissue grafting. Make sure you tune in. And then tomorrow, we'll be wrapping up the entire series with Dr. Mian Quek at 12 p.m. So make sure that you sign up today at dtacademy.ca. And as always, our password is TRACK, all caps, 20. Um, we'd like to thank our co-hosts, Dr. Chris Spinelli, John Sanderson, and Lauren Daughtery for doing such a great job with the introductions and the, the Q&A aspect. And of course, we'd like to thank our speakers for today, Dr. Jake Carrier, Dr. Mike Rondinelli. You guys did an absolutely fantastic job, so well done. And we're looking forward to the next talk and see how much you guys are growing and developing within your worlds. And once again, we'd like to also thank Doc, our Mr. Peter Jagoon from Sinclair. Thank you everybody for joining us. It was an incredible today, an incredible day today, such informative talks, and we look forward to seeing you all tonight at 6 p.m. and tomorrow at 12 p.m. Have a good day, guys. See ya. <laughs>